Well, let's talk about, uh, you know, Renew Power. Suman Sinha, who's the managing director of Renew Power, says that India's energy energy demand is going to grow from two, going to grow two to three times over the next 20 to 30 years. In a conversation with Manisha Gupta at the India Energy Week, Sinha said that India will add an energy system equivalent to the size of European Union over the next 20 to 30 years. India has this unique opportunity to write a very different energy development path. Uh, every other large country in the world has, fallen a, has followed a carbon intensive or fossil fuel intensive path. Uh, India's energy demand is going to grow by 2x or 3x in the next 20 to 30 years. And the path that India follows can be fundamentally different from the path that every other country has followed. And uh, we can actually choose to grow in a much more fossil fuel light way and therefore a carbon less in intensive way and not just be fundamentally different from every other country but also then become a beacon for a lot of other developing countries that are going to follow India's path. And so you're absolutely right, India has this unique opportunity to write our own energy book as it were. So it's not going to be as easy because uh, when we look around us, yes, there's a lot of conversation, but on ground it's quite slow, would you say, and the investment as well, while a lot has been talked about in sense of numbers, on ground still is less. You're absolutely right. I think that uh, a lot needs to be done. But that's just because of the sheer scale of India. India is the third largest power market in the world and the third or fourth largest energy market in the world. Uh, as we add, uh, you know, more demand to, uh, to uh, as we grow, India is over the next 20 to 30 years going to add a energy system the size of the European Union today. And that tells you how massive the opportunity is and also the challenge therefore is. Now, the good news, however, is that technologies are becoming available, uh, new uh, business models are becoming available, and therefore, we don't actually have to follow everybody else. As I said earlier, we can follow our own unique path. And in a way, it's actually positive for India because we don't have a legacy energy system which is huge and massive. We can actually build our energy system in a fundamentally different way. Would you say that there is a lot of cost competition as well when you look at perhaps gas or uh, hydrogen or electricity for that matter and there's a lot of number crunching still happening? Well, you know, cost competition is always great. It's good for uh, the consumer and it's good for essentially making sure that the cost of energy for all the downstream industries is as low as possible to make India a competitive manufacturing country. So I think cost competition is good. Uh, look, I think that the fossil fuel uh, cost levels are where they are. They go up and down based on demand and supply. But uh, I think on the renewable side and on, the, on things like green hydrogen, which are fundamentally based on renewables, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done to bring the cost down even further. Uh, and I think that work will continue to happen. And as scale increases and as technology learnings come in and as manufacturing learnings come in, that cost will keep coming down to make renewables more cost competitive with uh, fossil fuel over a longer period of time. And I think that is fundamentally going to be good for the consumer. So, you know, it is said that the next five years are going to be critical, even crucial for that matter. How would you map up the next five years when it comes about renewables? Well, you're absolutely right. The next five, to, I would say even eight years are crucial for two reasons. Number one, we have to scale up renewables to essentially decarbonize the electricity sector fundamentally. But electricity represents only a quarter of the entire energy uh, ecosystem and the balance three quarters which can be addressed now fundamentally through green hydrogen and through things like methanol green ammonia and sustainable aviation fuels a lot of technology work needs to be done a lot of work on the customer side needs to be done and all of that has to happen this decade if it does not happen this decade then I fear we will lose the opportunity of really dealing with climate change so that work needs to happen and we need to really start finding the technology solutions and put those in place so that we can really scale them up fundamentally after 2030. So there's a lot of work that we need to do in this decade to bend the curve down and really make a dent on climate change issues. So what are your plans specifically for the next 5, 8 or 10 years? Well, you know, uh, I think two, three things. Number one, as you know, we have, we have a leading position in the Indian renewable sector. We intend to maintain that. And as India grows, so shall we. Uh, and therefore we will continue to have to add a fairly significant amount of capacity to just maintain our position uh, in the renewable sector in India. Uh, the second thing that we would look at doing is obviously look at green hydrogen because that is in some ways the fuel of the future and it is of course based on renewable 
uh, energy as well. So that's our core competence. So, so we will work with on developing green hydrogen both in India and potentially outside India. And we will work with the downstream industries to see how we can find solutions based on green ammonia, methanol, ethanol and so on. Uh, so I think that's going to be our second uh, big thing that we'll end up doing. And then we are going to look at some of the ecosystem of opportunities around renewable energy, both in India and globally, things like the carbon market, uh, and really try to see how we can become a decarbonization partner for corporates, both in India and overseas. Okay, very bullish comments coming in from Renew Power there. We need to take a short break, but do watch out for the markets. The Nifty is now broken 17,690, which is yesterday's intraday low. So it has moved to the low point of the day. Let's see incremental pressure, which is coming in from some key stocks. Uh, do watch out for a couple of these Adani stocks, but it is the metal stocks which are uh, really exerting the maximum amount of pressure. Tata Steel on the back of its Q3 numbers, Indalco on the back of Novellis numbers. Both these stocks are your top losers on the Nifty. ITC, which has been at a fresh high, is down around 3-odd percent today. Take a short break. We'll get you more on the markets once we're back. Stay tuned.